Hey, this is Scott with uh, doing a live session here at my home uh, on my computer instead of at the uh, Church of the Crossing where I normally am. I uh, just wanted to start doing some shorts, um, see how they are, uh, and see, see if there's a response to these. Um, <clears throat> if you watched last night, I've been having some issues with my with my internet and with, I'm not sure what I what I did, but it doesn't show up where I wanted it to on this site. So what I'm going to do is I've been I've enlisted some help from a professional. My friend Tim Baker is going to try to educate this old man to be able to do this better. Here in the near future, uh, I'm going to have my my office is now that my future office is vacant, and I'm going to set it up so I can do videoing. I'm going to uh, change the cameras. Going. The computer's going to stay the same. The old ugly face is going to stay the same. It's just you're going to see a different background, <laughs> except for what I'm teaching at the church. Uh, what I want to do is there's uh, questions get asked, and I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to do short videos where if people have questions that you can you can uh, write in uh, and to be able to ask questions on you know anything. What I do is I would like to uh, have them for right now, I'm, I'm wanting to be able to, I've got pre-recorded or pre-written down questions already been asked. And, and then in the future, just send on Facebook Messenger uh, for now, any kind of questions you may have. Um, because again, I'm learning something changed and I don't know what it is. And I'm having my friend Tim is going to educate me on how to do this. <laughs> okay, uh, Let's go ahead and just pray in real quick and then we'll get started. Father, thank you for this time together, your blessings, your mercy, your grace. Please give us understanding and wisdom through your Holy Spirit. We ask this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. Okay. One of the questions, one of the questions we have is uh, how many people, let me see, how many people did it take to write the Bible? Well, ultimately just one. It wasn't a person, it was God, the Holy Spirit, giving the information to anyone who was writing. Because the entire word of God is an it's called the inspired word of God. Okay, so what well, you know, so therefore that's kind of the simple answer. But how many people did God use to write? Well, first he used Moses was the first writer who wrote the first five books of the Bible, but he wrote the book of Job first. Well, then he used different writers throughout for the Old Testament, or what we call the Old Testament as Christians, uh, or or the Tanakh, the Talmud. For the, my Jewish friends, okay? Well, then he also used people to write the New Testament or the, the New Covenant, the Completed Covenant. So in total, there was 40, 40. Um, there was 40 people who wrote the, in the New Testament, wrote the entire Bible. So that's how many that God used. So I hope that answers your question on that one. Um, let me go ahead and see... Okay, I just trying to check to see. Next thing is, um, how long, how long did it take to write it? Okay, good question. Okay, these are all going to be in the same column uh, for the for the questions uh, that I've that I've got chosen here. How long did it take to write? Well, from the time Moses started until John the Revelator in 95 AD. Moses started, obviously, when he came out of Egypt, when the Hebrews left on the Exodus. That's a dead giveaway <laughs> in the Exodus. That's the second book of the, of the Old Testament. Um, it was approximately 1,500 years. Uh, so 1,500 years. They went up until uh, approximately, God didn't say anything to the people for about 400 years from from the time that Christ came back, there was about a four century gap there that, he, that it, we don't have any information that God spoke to anyone during that time. Okay, so and after that, then you had the apostles who wrote. You had Paul, who was the most prolific. He wrote thirteen, possibly fourteen books in the New Testament. We still don't know who wrote Hebrews, but I think it's Paul. Okay, he, uh, we have uh, Matthew. Mark, Luke, uh, and Luke wrote, obviously, Luke and Acts. You have John the Revelator who wrote John, 
John, uh, first John, second John, third John, and Revelation. We have Jude, who's bro uh, the brother of Jesus. You have James. You have Peter. The apostles all all got to write. The only one, the ones who didn't write anything were the, the women. Uh, now they were wrote about, obviously were, were mentioned and, and written about in the scriptures, but they're not weren't used by the Holy Spirit as a, to, to uh, author any of the, any of the books. Um, were these all written on the same in the same area? No, no, they weren't. Uh, the thing is, we have three different continents that these were written on. Uh, you have, uh, we know that the Middle East was where it started. Um, we know that, like in Persia or, you know, Iran, uh, Babylon, Iraq, which Daniel was there. Daniel was a big, a, a very, one, matter of fact, we're in Daniel on Wednesday nights uh, in the study. Uh, but you have uh, the Middle East, which we got Asia, which Paul wrote in. You have Africa, which we just spoke about, and Europe. So Africa, Asia, and Europe. Were the three, there were three continents that it was written on. Jesus did not come to the West. He did not come to the Americas. There is absolutely zero proof, zero archaeological proof, zero biblical proof. That's uh, only in one branch of people who say they're Christian who worship a different Jesus, and that would be our Mormon friends. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, this is one that we've, we've we've spoken of, and I've talked about a lot. It says, "When was when was the rapture you the term? Excuse me. When was the word rapture used?" Okay, it says, "Was it need?" Okay, the question is: Is when was the term rapture, the word itself, used? Was it used in the 1830s? And I've spoken about this many times, so here we go. I should I'll, I'll, I'll answer it again. <laughs> In 1832 or four, there was supposed to be a, a woman who had a, a dream or a vision, and then supposedly she thought about thought up the idea of the rapture, and that was the first time that it was heard of, and then the Christian leaders ran with it. Okay, that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, Jesus talks about the rapture. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. This is in Matthew. He says, in Matthew 25, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many mansions or many rooms in my father's house and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come back receive you bring you with me and bring you to where I am at in other words currently when he's in heaven that means he's coming to get us and take us where he's at it's not done on mid-trib or post-trib ideas so Jesus talks about the about the uh, rapture um, Paul talks about the rapture uh, in first and first Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen through eighteen, where he says, "We will all be caught." Those who are believers will be caught up. The word "caught up," when you read it in any of your scriptures, the word, the, the Latin word is uh, "rapturo," "rapturo." The uh, the Greek, the Koine Greek, which is what the New Testament is written in, is actually called "harpazo." They have the same meaning, which means to be caught up forcibly. Um, in other words, not just kind of floating up in the heaven like you see on the Hollywood. No, it's to be taken up forcibly. How do you? How can you see this? Go to a, a there's a there's a, a an app on the computer or on your phone. Uh, it's called BlueLetterBible.org. All no spaces. Blue as in the color letter Bible. Dot org and go into your version of the Bible and type in, uh, in the search ribbon, just type in number one, Thess, T-E-H-S, uh, four. Now it'll take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter four and then read 13 through 18. And then when you when you get down to where it says caught up, go over to the side and then over to the side, you'll have a toolbar and it says tools. Click it and it'll pop it open and it'll give you the Greek uh, name the Strong's Concordance location, and we'll translate it for you. And it doesn't go left or right. It just tells you what it means. It means to be caught up forcibly. So yes, the word rapture, rapture does appear in the Bible. Uh, we don't see Bible in Bible. We don't see Trinity in Bible. But obviously, it talks about it extensively. So yes. Um, also, John the Revelator um, spoke about it quite a bit. 
especially in Revelation where he explains all this. He, he speaks on the revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, because Christ gave him, the uh, John the Revelator, uh, all the information. How do we know that? Because he tells us he did. He said, this is a revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of John the, the Revelator. John the Revelator was the tool used by Christ to be able to give the information, to write it down and then to give it to us. And it says uh, very clearly, it goes in there from, uh, we are in Revelation from chapter 1 through chapter 4, verse 1. And then all of a sudden, we're, we're gone. <laughs> the church is gone. And then it comes to chapter 19 where we come back with Christ and land on the Mount of He lands on the Mount of Olives and we're following him. And then the thousand year millennial reign begins. Um, one last one. Uh, let me see. Okay. Do we know when? No, no we don't. Do, do, do we know? It says in, Ma in Luke, especially Luke 21, it says, uh, it, you know, it's like, do we know the time of the rapture? That's a simple one. No, we do not. Um, okay, confusion here. When I was speaking on in my in my article that's in on pray5.org and it's on Scott Hogue Facebook here and Christian Daily in the Daily Christian Talk, it refers it's talking about you get the the uh, the uh, seven year tribulation, which is separate from the rapture. When God says no one knows the hour or the day of the rapture, that's what He's referring to. But if you're in the if you if you miss the rapture because of unbelief and you're in the tribulation when they see the signing of the peace agreement, you'll know there's there's in this article I won't go over all of it. It tells you're gonna know the day, the time, the hour, and the location of the return of Jesus Christ on the Mount of Olives at the end of the tribulation. We on this side of the, of the rapture can't know. Until somebody sees the signing of the peace agreement, like it says in Daniel, uh, 500 years before Christ, in Daniel tells when the what will happen when the tribulation starts. Well, anyway, that's it. Uh, I don't want to go any further than this. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and just PM me and say, Scott, I got a question on whatever. I don't care what it is. And the more that I have come in, the more times I'll do this. And I'm going to keep it like right now, it's below, I'm going to keep it below 15 minutes. Okay? I don't want to go over 15 minutes. If I have to and there's more questions, I'll just break it up in, into each 15-minute segment and go from there. Glad you could join me. Uh, let me know your comments in this section. And uh, I'll be watching and it's, it's just let me know what you think. I'll see you, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, Father, please uh, touch us, use us, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time. Thank you for joining me.